Hello, my name is Hanna Rosti and I, we are here now in Gangao Forest where I study nocturnal animals. These are the few, only few fragments remaining from these ancient cloud forests that are 30 million years old. And the species that we study and that you can also hear from the background are greater galagos at the moment, three hyraxes and also dwarf galagos. Our first article was about dwarf galagos that has previously been seen in 1999 and we were able to find it again in 2019. Unfortunately, this population of, of the dwarf galagos here in this forest is less than 10 individuals, so they may go extinct. The second article was just published in last December, and this article described most common calls of these species, and we made this taxonomic distinction based on these calls, as these mammals had not been studied before. Both of these articles gained a lot of international attention. So this call comparison showed to us that the uh, common galago that we actually hear in the background is Otolamurganeti lasiotis, subspecies of lasiotis meaning. And this is a species that is quite common in this forest and also in surrounding villages. Those who are staying at the Taita research station often hear the calls in the station also. Then in this same study we found out that this population of Gangao dwarfs they are actually belonging to the Kenya coast dwarf galago. It was a surprise to us because in the, at the as like its name says the Kenya coast dwarf galago lives in the coast of Kenya in the lowlands and here in Gangao forest they live in a mountain forest almost in 1900 meters above the sea level. Third species, and the one that I'm most interested in at the moment, is three hyrax. Uh, three hyraxes in general are really interesting animals. They are related to elephants and manatees. Uh, they have really uh, low body temperature, low metabolic rate, they eat leaves. Um, they are quite round, I, they might be even 5 kilograms as their body weight. They, are, um, they have only three sausage like toes and it's a quite a miracle how they can climb in the trees so nicely with just these three toes. These pictures that you are seeing are really rare. Nobody else has taken pictures of the tree hyraxes at night. Now, when we do this research, we are using thermal imaging camera that was borrowed to us by Lammi Biological Station. Thank you so much, John Lur, for borrowing us this thermal imaging camera. And this thermal imaging camera is showing us, for the first time ever, behavioral things that the tree hyraxes do. We can see how they move, we can see what they eat, and we can see what they do when they call, and uh, what trees they are in, and so on. So this is what, I, what our research is at the mo moment focusing on. Uh, I drive to this forest with the motorcycle. I really love driving here and back down. In this forest, as you can see, we are using only red light and this red light allows us to see 
lives of these animals as they are naturally in the forest. So we have, for example, met this Sunni antelope. We have met these three little birds and also rats. We saw rats every night and many other animals also because they are not bothered by this red light that we are using. In the forest, my assistant is Benson. How do you say your last name? Mwakachola. Okay. And I've learned that this theater forest contains so much which, which actually needs to be protected all along. Because I think if you don't do that, in the near future, there will be nothing left. So these tree hyraxes and dwarf galagos are really packed in the small area. So goal of this research is not only just to provide research information about these species, but also promote conservation of these species. People in Taita Hills are still quite poor. Most of them live from small-scale farming. So the only way that the conservation of these forest and reforestation is possible is if they also benefit from this conservation. This could happen through sustainable ecotourism. It could happen if people are paid compensation for planting indigenous trees to their farms. Okay, for this last part of the video, I wanted to come here to Lumo, which is a community-owned conservation area right below Taita Hills, which you can see behind my back. And the reason for this is I wanted to show you how these things are connected. Um, because most of the forest cover from Taita Hills are lost and the human population is quite dense and they use a lot of water so there's less water for the animals and wildlife and also live people living here in the lowlands. So we are in this amazingly beautiful place and it looks like a paradise but everything is not okay here because the lack of water during the dry season causes elephant to push down the trees. Loss of trees causes cascade of loss of biodiversity because so many species are dependent on trees, like insects, birds, many antelopes, giraffes and so on. So having enough water in the savanna is really important. So by conserving forest and increasing the size of indigenous forest up in the hills and on the mountain tops would have many great benefits for this whole area. It would uh, mitigate climate change, it would provide water security and it would protect thousands of these fabulous species living in this area. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, ideas or comments, please contact me. Thank you for listening.